What is up guys and welcome to the second ever episode of On The Fly. I am your favorite washed up ex-college lacrosse player, Katie DeFeo. Now a rundown of last weekend's women's lacrosse game. Actually first, I want to address something. Last week we launched Unleashed, so obviously I was very excited to be a part of this brand launch. I send my friends and family my first ever vlog, which you can find if you subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. And what I got back I was not expecting. Everybody's first question instead of, wow, how sick, how'd you think of that idea? It's so cool, congratulations. Are you excited to be working with the PLL again? Congrats, Katie. Everyone, no, none of that. Everyone's first question was, why are you in the middle of a parking lot? And to be honest, the reason I am in a parking lot is because when I used to vlog with my friends, I didn't have to really do anything or go anywhere. We were always just doing whatever we were doing at that time, and I was recording it, putting it on the internet. But now, you know, I read a script, and I want to talk about a lot of different things. So what am I going to do, sit in front of my computer, like, in my apartment? No, I want to get out into the world. I also don't really want to be around too many people because we're in the middle of a global panoramic. So where do I go? Empty parking lot. Let's get into last weekend's games. We start in Syracuse, New York, in the Dome, where Syracuse took on Notre Dame twice. They're doing a little baseball schedule vibe where a team will fly up to upstate New York Grab a nice little hotel and play Syracuse twice in one weekend now That is a bad sign if you are the team that's about to play Syracuse because Syracuse is hashtag sick at lax Syracuse in their first matchup on Friday beat Notre Dame came around on Sunday beat them again If I'm on Syracuse this week, I just beat Notre Dame twice in one weekend Notre Dame top five opponent like what are we doing? Obviously UNC they're everything that we thought they were gonna be but let's put some respect on Syracuse and and Emma Ward. I'm not kidding. My entire life, I've only ever wanted one thing. To be able to shoot like this in a game. This is a high school highlight of mine from a club game against Crash Vault, the C team. This is a highlight of mine. It's not as cool as Emma Ward's, but Emma Ward, you are a queen. That was a sick shot. Only a freshman. I don't understand it. Sick ribs from the 8 meter. What a perfect segue into our next game of this past weekend that I'm going to present to you in the rundown. Ladies and gentlemen, Alyssa Perella, Hofstra University. Oh my God. Look at this shot. But guess what? Guess how many times the Villanova goalie had to turn and rake an Alyssa Perella shot in Hempstead, New York on that fateful day. 10 times. Alyssa had 10 goals. I literally, <laughs> I could not even genuinely dream of having 10 goals in a game. I can't. I can't even think of what that would feel like. You know, we've all been there. You have a couple goals, two, three, maybe four. I usually in high school would cap it at six. Alyssa in that one game had 10 times as many goals as I had in my entire career at USC. Alyssa Perella, we applaud you. That was pretty sweet. And the other thing is I want to say, I want to make a point. It's easy to have a lot of goals in like a blowout, but it was a close game. Like each goal that Alyssa was scoring, like at Added to like a very tight lead for, for Hofstra in that game. So kudos to you, congratulations, that was pretty awesome. Now for our last game, let me set the scene for you a little bit here. Last week we had our first pros pick em, which is where myself and four professional women's lacrosse players on Instagram, oh my God, this bus, can you guys hear this bus beeping? I really hope you can. Myself and four professional women's lacrosse players over on Instagram picked the winners of five upcoming games from the weekend. I, last week, picked the Jacksonville University Jaguars. Oh no, they're not even the Jaguars. Last week I picked the Jacksonville University Dolphins to upset the Florida Gators. But it wasn't some fluke on Instagram. I doubled down. I said this on the vlog last week. I think this might be the year that Jacksonville gives Florida a run for their money. Jacksonville was not ranked and Florida was ranked sixth in the country. It's ironic because I never played at USC so I have the least credibility of all the pros. But like Alex, Taylor, Kylie, Molly, like, this week I have another really hot take. I honestly think that Rutgers is gonna beat Northwestern, but you didn't hear that here. So just wait. The Katie DeFeo lock of the week is that you always pick an upset. Always. Regardless, I'm getting ahead of myself. Last weekend, Florida showed up to Jacksonville. I woke up, rolled out of bed. 10 minutes into the game, I turned it on. Florida's winning. I'm like, oh my God, this is horrible. But then, weirdly, as my Postmates breakfast arrived at my apartment, something happened. The Jacksonville women's lacrosse team Woke up. It was like they knew I was watching. Jacksonville went back and forth with Florida for the whole rest of the first half. They got like every single draw. Their goalie was phenomenal. They were up one at halftime. And then the rest is history. Who better to bring on? I told you guys that as the host of this show, you know, I obviously never really played at USC. Ha ha. But like, I do have friends that are hashtag sick at lax. And, and I spoiled you guys a little bit last week. Kerrigan Miller, Izzy McMahon, the whole McMahon family for that matter. I spoiled you guys last week with my hashtag sick at lax friends. But it gets even better this week. I see this upset on my television. Right after the game, I get a FaceTime. Who is it? Sarah Elms 
three goals in the game. One of Jacksonville's best players also happens to be my best friend from sixth grade. I told you guys I have friends that are hashtag sick at lax. Why don't we bring another one of them on? Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Sarah McKenzie Elms from Jacksonville University by way of Saverna Park. Out in Saverna Park, Maryland. Go Falcons. We got a lot of heart. Sarah Elms, welcome to the show on the fly. The second ever guest in the history of the show. How's it going? Okay, did it fail? How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Um, I'm great. Sixth grade, Miss Engstrom's social studies class. First period. We all come from different elementary schools. I walk in, I see this girl with a money sign necklace on, and <laughs> I was like, wow, it would be great to be friends with her. Um, find out later it was just an S necklace, but um, Miss Engstrom, if you're watching, thank you for making that connection. Sixth grade, you were on my SP Lax team, and then you left to go to Maryland United. That was a very sad time in my life, but you know, it's okay. We all move on to greener grass. We did start on the same lacrosse team in sixth grade, but now obviously your career has gone a little bit further, um, which, which is why you're on the show. You decide to go to Jacksonville um, out of high school, out of Serena Park. We obviously went to the same high school and you get there and you have a great freshman year. And then your sophomore year, you tear your ACL. Is that correct? Yes. That's yes. Correct. And then junior year last year, um, obviously the row row year. Now finally you're a senior. You freshman, you were like conference like player of the century, and like then sophomore year injury, junior year Coco, unbelievable brutal run of like bad luck. You finally get senior year. You guys are playing obviously right now, and you have Florida yesterday. And Florida has always been like I said, like I predicted. Florida has always beaten you guys, and I called that yesterday was going to be the day that you guys were going to upset them. So first, before we get to that, what have you learned? from dealing with the adversity of your college experience, of all the different things that have come up and happened, the ACL, coronavirus, and now you're you're a senior and a leader on the team. What are you what are you able to bring to the table having gone through all of that? Right, yeah. So with all that I would just say like you never know when your last day is, you know, like tomorrow could you know COVID could hit again, you could tear yeah. your ACL again, any sort of injury. So I think just kind of taking every day, um, day by day and just not taking it for granted. Yesterday you guys play Florida at home, big game, like I said. I called it not trying to flex or anything, but I did genuinely call it not once but twice Which was crazy and yesterday I turn on the game I'm like, oh my god Like of course obviously Sarah's going off But then I was like there was no scoreboard So I look in the chat and found out what the score was and I was like wow This is pretty sick playing in a game like that and you know that like whatever the experts are so to speak Like think you're supposed to lose or like you're not ranked as high You're the underdog in that game It's easy to come out and like have a good first 10 minutes But it's like putting all of that together for a full game So like, you guys had a good first 10 minutes like when I I was on SP Lax and we played Maryland United like yeah we could have a good first like we could go up one to zero but then you guys would beat us like 20 to one you guys punch them in the mouth they punch back they tie it up going into like halftime it was like a close game again what were the conversations like to be like okay like we did it we're here we're we're in this with them but now we need to like finish this out yeah so at halftime our coaches kind of brought it in like all right zero zero like we fought this far you know in the past we've been kind of like a second half team so they're kind of like okay we're like actually in it for real this time like let's not you know let off the brake let's you know full steam ahead yeah. put on the gas let's just you know finish it out we have a new coach this year who's just like shoot that thing yeah shoot the ball yeah as, much as, can, as much as you yeah. can want all the shots all this so, yeah you know building up everyone's confidence really empowering us so games we had so much confidence going to this game it was like nothing like i've ever seen before being yeah. at jacksonville and you know, we were literally all like we're gonna win yeah we don't know why we think this so yeah much, but we're gonna win yeah and so I, I don't know if that was just a mental thing in the past or what it was but yeah it was great it was phenomenal to be playing and then to see that scoreboard at the end so how do you step above of just like beating florida and like really look to like continue just like pounding through this season yeah i think that now we have kind of a target on our backs you know people are seeing what we're capable of and they're knowing who we are now so i think it's just prepare for what's to come game by game we can't you know let anyone uh, take it for granted and you know play hard every game play hard and fast and aggressive and just be who we are that's what it means to be a dolphin i'm on the, i'm absolutely <laughs> dude i'm on the bandwagon i am just it's i commented today i saw the post i'm like this oh, is it's the hype train like i'm literally the conductor of the hype train thank you for coming on the show we really appreciate you spending the time to come on on the fly and, and share your knowledge with us of course yeah thank you of course oh is there anything you'd like to say to all the fans out there go ju Yep. Going into our game on Saturday versus Virginia Tech. Oh, you guys are playing Virginia Tech on Saturday? Oh my god, the hype train continues. On to Jacksonville in my mind. Jacksonville, America's team, the lock of the week. They're going undefeated. They're going to win the national championship. I am so confident in the Jacksonville Dolphins. I said it last week. I really hope you guys can't hear this bus because... 
and I just believe. Fins up. All of the Jacksonville girls reached out to me on Instagram. They were like, thank you for believing. I was like, guys, thank you for what you've given me. Something to root for. It's been a tough year. Jacksonville women's lacrosse to the moon. <laughs> Anywho, so on Friday, if you open Instagram and you follow at UnleashWLax, which you already should have done, you will find a pros pick'em graphic. Mind you, I went 100% last weekend. The other pros, I don't know why I say the other pros as if I'm a pro. The pros were not as lucky to go 100%, but we have another whole pick'em this weekend. The first game I want to highlight is Maryland versus Ohio State. Maryland, in my eyes, is like basically think of what UNC has done this year. Maryland has been doing that to teams for like four decades. It's not fair. It was never fair. College Park is where dreams go to die as far as I'm concerned for other teams. I used to spend my birthday on May 18th every single year going to their playoff games, which tells you all you need to know is that they're always in the playoffs. Um, I'm a Maryland lacrosse fan. I'm a Maryland lacrosse fan through and through. I will always root for Maryland, so I'm taking them this weekend over Ohio State, but Ohio State women's lacrosse is a team that likes to make noise, so don't expect it to be a blowout. Don't expect them to roll over. Now we move to Virginia Tech. Who are they playing, you might ask? America's team, Jacksonville women's lacrosse. I'm picking Jacksonville here. I love Angie Benson. She is one of my favorite people, and I literally, it pains me to have to pick against her, but I'm picking Jacksonville in this game. America's team. Never bet against the Finns. I'm going with the Finns. Finns up. I love you guys. You gave me something to root for. Now, Notre Dame versus Louisville. Simple here. Notre Dame lost two games to Syracuse. I don't see them losing again. That would make three in a row. They're not a three loss in a row type of team. I uh, expect Notre Dame to bounce back against Louisville. Rutgers versus Northwestern. I am taking Rutgers in this game. I would watch Rutgers versus Northwestern, and here is why. Northwestern is very good. They're a top five ranked team this year. They've blown out Big Ten opponents. They, they are legit. Northwestern's legit. I think though Rutgers is a gritty team that New Jersey identity They're always looking for a fight. They claw their way to win I know what their men's team has done this year has no correlation But I just think the water is a little bit different in Brunswick, New Jersey this time of year I am picking Rutgers because I always have to pick an upset last time I picked an upset it worked So I'm going with Rutgers to beat Northwestern. I love everybody on Northwestern that I'm friends with This is nothing personal. Please don't ever take any of this personal My goal is not to alienate half of our audience um, each week by picking picking against them, so I love you guys. I just, I don't know. I'm trying to mix it up. I'm 100% on my picks so far this year. I've never lost. Undefeated, never lost. I'm undefeated, never lost. I'm looking forward to these games this weekend. I hope you guys are too. Do your part and watch a women's lacrosse game this weekend. Grow the game. Thank you all for watching episode two of On The Fly with Katie DeFeo featuring Sarah Elms. And get your merch down below. I didn't wear my merch in this episode. You wanna know why? I have a good reason. I went to dinner the other night at an Italian spot and I spilled penne alla vodka on my merch. I have not yet had the chance to watch it. This is a little bit too much information. I hope you guys watch a game this weekend. Subscribe down below. Get your merch down below. I hope you can't hear that bus beeping. Everybody have a safe week and fight on. If that's not your thing, peace.